All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to extend the editor that I have for the project to be able to show the properties that are available in the actual theme. In this case, it's a scriptable object. So, because right now, if I want to see what the theme looks like, I have to double click it in order to see it, or I could go into the file and then, you know, if I want to have a new property set or if I want to have another roof, I can do that, but only go into a file. But I think what I want to do is I want to be able to stay here make changes have those changes be saved to the file and then that way we can just concentrate on the editor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and modify the editor script that i have in my solution so if i go to editor project editor we can see that we have we have something that is very basic it works really well but i think we need to at this point i want to extend it because it's going to allow us to, like I said, to be able to see the scriptable object. And just as a recap, the scriptable object that I'm talking about is the one that is under the theme. It has, a, it has a way so that we can create an asset through the menu. This is the default name, also the menu item. So if I go under assets and I click on progen, create progen theme, it's going to create a scriptable object in the file system that has these properties. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be changing the way that this is modified. So this is modified through the file system, but we also want to modify it through the actual project editor. So to do that, I'm going to have to move a couple of things around. So we're going to start by just creating a, moving this logic here, the instantiation of the, the actual reference to the project. We're gonna move it as a private variable. So I'm just gonna move it here. And then also we're going to be moving this out to the enable, on enable method so that when we on enable when we on so that when we enable the script it basically is going to set that instance so we're just going to say progen and then i'm just going to do the exact same thing that i'm doing below which is going to be progen and then we're going to get the, we're going to get the target we'll just go ahead and on and fix the indentation there which means that we don't need to do that here anymore and i'm also going to be removing this gui change and i'm going to show you i'm going to show you why that is the other thing that I'm also going to do is I'm going to create an editor and that editor is going to allow us to pass in settings and the settings are going to be the actual theme. So it's going to be theme editor. So what we're going to do is we're going to be extending the on inspector GUI. So before we do that, I'm going to be creating a new method. This is going to be draw settings, settings on editor. And then this is going to take a couple arguments. We're going to take in an object and the object are going to, is going to be the settings. We're also going to be taking a system that action and in that action is going to be the action that happens when we update the settings because we, we want to regenerate the procedural building when we change anything in the scriptable object so we need to basically have an action that is bound to that i also going to have a, a boolean property that is going to be for determining if something is fold out or not and then also my reference to my editor so I'm just gonna do editor and then just do curly brace to start a new line. So what we're gonna do is we need to make sure that the settings are checked, are actually set. So I'm gonna do if this is not null, meaning that we set the settings. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initialize our bool, which is the fold out. And I'm gonna call in, I'm gonna call in a static method, which is on the editor GUI layout. And then we're gonna call the inspector title bar. I'm gonna pass in that variable and I'm also going to be passing in the actual settings. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do just a using statement, and we're gonna be checking the state of the inspector. If anything changes, this, this property is gonna be changed. So I'm just gonna do editor GUI, and if I can type that correctly, and then we're just gonna say change check in a scope. So what's gonna happen with this is we're gonna be able to use this to, ter to determine if something changed in the editor. And we did something similar with the GUI that changed, but if we want to do a custom, draw a custom settings, basically area in our editor, we need to do it this way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, I'm gonna call create cache editor. I'm gonna pass it in my settings, a null value, and then my reference to the editor that I am creating. Then I'm just gonna do editor and then just call on inspector GUI. We're gonna also check to make sure that if we have, if we have anything changed on the actual editor, then we're going to be, and in this case, it's going to be a check to make sure that I, if I change any properties, we're gonna be calling the, the same method that I'm calling right here, which is gonna be the project that generate. Perfect, so, but I don't need to call it directly like this anymore because we're passing in an action. So that's, the, that's what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna say, okay, 
Now, if there's a change that happened, I'm also going to be I'm also going to be checking and make sure that the on settings update was set. So if if on settings updated was was set, that means that I did pass in an action, which means that I can call itself, which is, in our case is going to be this method right here. Okay, so now what we need to do is just call the draw settings editor. I need to pass in, in the actual progen theme, which it, which were already created in the previous video. I also need to call the progen generate, but I'm not going to actually call it here. We're just going to be passing in the reference because this is taking in an action. I also going to tell the system this is going to be fold out. So I'm just going to pass in, in a true value. And then lastly, what we need to do is we need to pass in the reference to the theme editor. So what we're going to do here, just like I said before, we're just going to be creating a, a custom settings editor that is going to have the title of our settings. And then we should be able to see the progen editor showing the theme within the inspector. So if we go back into Unity and we look at the settings, we should now be able to see we should now be able to see the the themes within the progen script. And that's what we see now, which is and now it's a lot more helpful because I don't have to double click here in order to see it. We can just look at it, look at it from here. We can see the title, which is the one that we created. We can also see that it's fold out. So we can see all the different settings. I can also just uncheck this and the change method is going to be executed just like it did when we had the GUI change. And then also if I wanted to just do, you know, if I wanted to change this to one, you're going to see that now roof simple is the only thing that gets included if I set it to two. And then the other thing that I can also do, let's say that I want to move another property, we can go ahead and go into my progen. And if I wanted to do, if I wanted to move something else, let's say the way I wanted to move the randomized randomized window selection. It's just as easy as I showed you before. We can go and and basically cut it out and then put it right here. We can then just remove the serialize field and I'm going to just make it a public. And then this is going to complain because the, the basically the property was moved. So we're just going to look for it in here and I'm just going to say theme, which I already have on top. Let me make sure that I type that correctly. And then I think that's the only instance where I have that. Now, if we go back into Unity, we should see that the scriptable object now has that new property in just a second. And here we go. So if I click on it, you can see that it gets randomized. If not, it doesn't get randomized. And we shouldn't see it here because I think that's one of the beauties about, you know, the scriptable objects is as soon as I make a change, it's available. So what I'm going to be doing for the by the next video is just moving everything that I have here most of everything that I have here to a scriptable object because it's going to make it easier if we want to swap a scriptable objects and then be able to actually source control that. It's going to be great. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.